Hello, everyone. Thank you for signing on to today's Amtrak Vacations National Park Series number three, featuring Yellowstone National Park and beyond. I'm so excited to have all of you folks here on the presentation today, particularly because Yellowstone National Park is my favorite national park. And coincidentally, it is America's first established national park and there's a lot of great stories and anecdotes to go along with it. So let's jump in and talk about the subject of the day. Here I am popping up onto your screen, your host, business development executive, Jarrett Kettinger. Now I recognize folks, yes, I do look like I'm still in high school in my picture. Uh, I've actually been with Amtrak Vacations for going on seven years now. And so if any of you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to type them into the questions box on the side of the GoToWebinar panel. You'll see it on the side there. You can type your questions in at any time. Now, I will say I am going to wait till the end of the presentation to answer the questions, but type them in as your questions come about or as they pop into your head. Additionally, I like to make my presentations uh, interactive, and I like to see if you're paying attention or what your for, uh, previous knowledge is with Amtrak. So, I may ask you questions during the presentation that I would request that you would actually answer them by typing what you think the answers are into the questions box on the side of the GoToWebinar panel. Popping up onto your screen now is a reminder of the free handouts that we like to include on the presentation. Uh, today we have a free downloadable handout highlighting customization with Amtrak Vacations and how we can tailor make our itineraries to fit your particular bucket wish travel needs, your particular wishes, or even just how things are going about in your life and you want to accomplish some travel, how we can customize to fit your particular requests. Coming up now is the Amtrak Vacations Systems Map. Everywhere you folks are seeing a colorful line on the map, that's a route that Amtrak travels on. Simple as that. Everywhere you're seeing a dark blue or navy blue dot, that's a destination where Amtrak Vacations has a package that it goes to, incorporating the hotels, the sightseeing, and the attractions all bundled together. As you can see, we don't just travel in the United States, however. We do cross the border up into Canada, up into Montreal, Niagara Falls, Toronto, and Vancouver, and we can do cross Canada via rail packages. Now, a show of hands, and by hands, I mean simply typing yes or no into the side of the GoToWebinar platform. Who here was aware that Amtrak Vacations could also book Canadian via rail trips as well. Was anybody aware of that? Awesome. I'm seeing a lot of yeses pop up. That is excellent. A couple of no's. I understand that. Well, I'm glad that you do speak up even if you didn't know because it's a great opportunity to learn. Yes, we can cross the border up into Canada. Now, what makes Amtrak vacations different? Number one, it's a bucket list experience. And again, folks, you've already been really helpful and interactive, but let me ask you, does anyone here have a travel bucket list? And if so, where? It doesn't have to even be train related. I'm just interested to know where on your travel bucket list you would like to go. For example, on my travel bucket list last year, I was able to tackle Australia, both Sydney and Melbourne. I'd always but wanted to be there. A couple of years ago, I tackled the topic of the day, Yellowstone. Uh, and also last year, I actually was able to tackle my uh, bucket list of Cinque Terre in Italy. I know a lot of people don't want to talk about Italy nowadays, but it was on my bucket list and I accomplished it. All right, I'm seeing some really great responses. I'm seeing uh, visiting Alcatraz, which is really cool. Uh, going to the Arctic, Australia, Yellowstone, Spain, Glacier Park. I'm seeing uh, New Zealand. New Zealand, 
uh, for Pete Smith, New Zealand. Just so you know, Pete, New Zealand's high on my bucket list as well. So we all have travel bucket lists. Let's help you accomplish this. Alaska, Canadian Rockies as well. This is awesome. Thank you, folks. Freedom and flexibility. We can customize or tailor make any of our itineraries to fit your particular requests. I'm glad someone just put up the Grand Tetons because we're going to be talking about the Grand Tetons in just a minute. Hassle-free. Hassle-free because all you have to do to book is give us a call at 1-800-268-7252. We are the official tour operator for Amtrak, which is basically just a fancy way of saying we are Amtrak's national vacation company. We have a city-to-city -city service. Can anybody guess how many cities Amtrak travels through throughout the United States? How many cities and towns? How many stations we have? How many stations do you think you, you would guess that Amtrak travels through? All right, so I'm seeing 1,000. 1,000 would be a little bit more than, uh, than what we have, though you aren't entirely off for the trains in Europe. Let's see, hundreds, 123,000. That's a little much, uh, but that's okay. And, and, and you said that's a wild guess. It is a wild guess because who knows? There are over 500 different stations. Though for those who put in 1,000 to 3,000, and I know some of it was a wild guess, th there's actually around 1,400 stations in all of Europe, which if you think of the European countries, they're smaller. The United States, 500 different stations to choose from. And we have a little something for everyone, whether it's traveling cross country and seeing the country from the window of the train or going to a destination that you've always wanted to go to, but maybe never have visited before, or even just one day or just one moment on the whole trip that makes it all worth it. And let's move on from there. We have a new flexible booking policy. This is important, folks. Jot this down, take a look at it, because any new reservations can change their travel and their travel dates or cancel the rail and vacations up to five days prior to departure without incurring any change fee or cancellation fee. And any existing reservations can be rescheduled up to five days prior to departure without incurring any change fee or cancellation fee. Please, folks, give us a call. And if you're, I know things are a little bit tenable right now, give us a call and book because you want to go on your trip. You know, eventually this is going to settle down. We want to make sure that you're getting the best available pricing. And the earlier you book it, is the cheaper you're going to get it. So with all the uncertainty out there, I can tell you with certainty, things are going to pass and you're going to want to travel. We're just trying to make sure, one, you are comforted by our changing policy or our cancellation policy because we want to make sure you folks are comfortable with traveling with us. And number two, we want to make sure you get the exact um, the best price because we don't ever want to see anybody get uh, the higher prices. We like to help save you money. Give us a call. Now, what do I mean when I say we can customize? Well, let's go over a hypothetical scenario. So bear with me a second, and I'm going to just go over a, a hypothetical scenario that is a very common thing here at Amtrak Vacations. Say you're looking through our brochure, and you see the Rails to the Grand Canyon itinerary. Now, Rails to the Grand Canyon includes two nights on board the train, the Southwest Chief, going from Los Angeles, California, overnight on the train to Williams, Arizona, and back again. Now, between those two nights on the train, we also include two nights hotel accommodations at the south rim of the Grand Canyon. Now imagine you wanted to go there, you like the itinerary, but you wanted to do three nights at the Grand Canyon instead of two. No problem. Even though our itinerary dictates two nights, we can add a third night. Then 
not only did you want to add extra nights to the package, you wanted to upgrade where you were staying. So the base lodging is the Maswick Lodge, which we use every day, it's fine. But maybe you heard about the historic El Tavar that sits on the canyon ledge that so many celebrities, such as Teddy Roosevelt, Paul McCartney, Bill Clinton, um, uh, Albert Einstein, they've all stayed there. And it sits on the canyon ledge. Maybe you want to upgrade to that lodging. No problem. We can add an extra night and we can upgrade your hotel. Then last hypothetical, you want to do that exact itinerary, but you also want to spend some time in Los Angeles. Well, it just so happens that our Los Angeles getaway includes two nights hotel accommodations with a sightseeing tour of the city. So we might add that to the end of the package. So we would have taken the original itinerary, added an extra night, upgraded the lodging you were staying at, and then adding a few nights in Los Angeles as well to the package to create your own customized itinerary. Does that make sense to you folks now what I mean when I say we can customize our trips? Yes or no? Okay, thankfully, I'm seeing a couple of yeses come in, trickle in. That's good because it's important to note that we don't pigeonhole you into our itineraries. We can rework them to fit your travel needs. Now, the subject of the day, Yellowstone National Park. And I did see some folks say that they wanted to go to Yellowstone, that it was on their bucket list. So I'm not surprised that you showed up for the presentation today. Let me just go over some of the wonderful aspects of Yellowstone. Number one, Yellowstone is America's first established national park. And it's out in the western part of the country. And it sits atop of a super volcano. Was anybody aware of that? Yes or no? That the reason why there's so many geothermal features of the park is that Yellowstone itself literally sits atop of a super volcano. Now, we are in a blessed time, doesn't seem like it now, but the super volcano is not due to go off for millions of years from now. So in terms of blessed time, at least we can be thankful for that. Now, a funny story about Yellowstone that I heard from a, the driver of the tour I did through Yellowstone is how this park came to be. So back in the 1800s, Congress put together a group of surveyors, naturalists, uh, rangers, p p scientists, all sorts of folks. They put together a group of surveyors and they sent them out to this area of the country. It really hadn't been um, excavated or explored before. And the group came back and they went to Congress and they said, this place is amazing. We visited out there and we found this lake, but the lake was so big that we thought it was an ocean. We thought we had hit the other side of the country. It took us two days to circumvent this ginormous lake. It was Lake Yellowstone. And there was this hole in the ground that shot water high up in the air, like 100 feet in the air. And it came out so regularly that we could almost set our watch to it. Old faithful geyser. And there were these pools that were somehow blue and green and yellow and orange all of this all at the same time the hot springs like the grand prismatic spring you're seeing in the picture there they were amazed and astounded by it and you know what congress said to them we don't believe you they didn't believe them it was just too crazy a thought so they sent a whole second group of surveyors out there and those second group came back and they said the same exact thing. And so at that point, Congress kind of had to accept it in great use of money, <laughs> sending a whole second group. But because of all of the natural wonders of the park, Yellowstone was very nearly titled Wonderland National Park, 
because it literally seemed to them at the time like a natural American wonderland. So let's go over some of the itineraries. Yellowstone National Park Getaway, which I done myself. It includes four nights hotel accommodations, two nights in Salt Lake City, which Salt Lake City is our gateway to Yellowstone, and two nights in Yellowstone itself with Yellowstone's Lower Loop Tour, which will go down the Painted Pots Highway. You are guaranteed to see Old Faithful Geyser erupt at least once. You'll take in the many natural hot springs of the park, like the Dragon Spring, which is like this uh, tiny cave that like smokes and has gurgles that come out of it. It sounds like a dragon roaring. And you will see many, many forms of wildlife in the park. Uh, bison, you are guaranteed to see. Uh, we, we saw a wolf on ours, um, giant hawks, all of that you will get to get out in nature and experience. Now, someone earlier in the presentation mentioned that on their travel bucket list was the Grand Tetons. Well, what better way to experience it than the Grand Tetons in Yellowstone Rail Journey? This itinerary starts in Chicago, going overnight on the California Zephyr. The California Zephyr is voted the number one most scenic rail route on the Amtrak system year over year. The reason why is that it travels through the heart of the country, through the Colorado Rocky Mountains, and then in this case, will make its way and stop out in Salt Lake City. Upon arrival, the travelers would get in fairly late in the evening, and then the next day you'll wake up and get a rental car and start driving up into Jackson Hole. Now, folks, to give you a little insight, everywhere you're seeing a number in a bubble, that's the amount of nights overnight at a hotel. Everywhere you're seeing a red arrow with a number in it, that's the amount of overnights on the train, to make things simple for you. So after spending one night in Salt Lake City, you'll drive up to Jackson Hole, spend one night in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. We'll book the hotel room for you. The next day, you'll wake up and you'll have a morning wildlife tour that departs around 6 a.m. Sounds probably a little early for something going on on a vacation. However, there's a good reason for that. It departs early in the morning due to the fact that they want to get you to experience and see as much wildlife as possible. When you go out in the morning, there's much less people out at that hour. And then that way you will be able to see all the wildlife in the area. You are then coincidentally dropped off around noontime back at your hotel, where you would then pick up your rental car again, and would give you plenty of daylight to drive up into Yellowstone for a two-night stay in Yellowstone with a full-day tour throughout the park. As I mentioned before, the California Zephyr is regularly voted the number one most scenic railroad on the Amtrak system because it goes through the Colorado Rocky Mountains. It is quite beautiful. You will have a stay in Salt Lake City where you will pick up a rental car to head up into Grand Tetons National Park as well as Yellowstone National Park as well. So that, folks, is the Grand Tetons in Yellowstone Rail dirt journey. Does this sound interesting to anybody? Nice. Excellent. Definitely can get some folks here going out there later on this year, next year. And I want to say shout out to Sherry, who says sounds beautiful. Deb, who said yes. Carl, who said yes. Thanks, Carl. Then we had the Grand National Parks with Yellowstone. Yosemite and the Grand Canyon. This is notable for three reasons. Number one, it hits three of the most popular national parks all on one trip Yellowstone, Yosemite, and the Grand Canyon. I hope you all see that in the slide there. Number two, it's popular because it hits three of the top five most scenic rail routes on the Amtrak system the California Zephyr. The first one you'll travel out on, number one. 
The Coast Starlight, which ranks in at number two, is the second route you'll travel on from San Francisco down to Los Angeles. And then the Southwest Chief, which regularly ranks in at number three, going it from Los Angeles to the Grand Canyon area, the Grand Canyon to Chicago. Important to note, you folks have seen the California Zephyr, but it's important to note that the Coast Starlight regularly ranks in at number two. The reason why is it cusps the coast of California. During the stay in Salt Lake City, we include dinner at the Roof Restaurant, which is a five-star gourmet buffet on the 10th floor of the Joseph Smith Memorial Building overlooking the city, and the food is incredible. Giant carving stations, there's a piano player taking requests. You can get up in to the top of the building and watch the sunset over the cityscape. Uh, we have someone saying, excellent restaurant. It is an excellent restaurant. It also has an amazing dessert buffet, which if you're someone like me that has a major sweet tooth, you can definitely enjoy it. Look, folks, look at how beautiful and colorful you can get up in Yellowstone. Like that is an incredible picture because it's so vibrant. And that's really the best way I can describe what you're gonna see for colors when you visit this park. Vibrant, that's, that's the only word I can come up with. In San Francisco, we include a hop on hop off sightseeing tour where you can get on and off at the major attractions, including a ride over the Golden Gate Bridge. Folks, I hope you have a little bit better luck than me. I did this tour, I'm a little sore on this tour because beautiful tour, they got us all around the city, it was great. I went over the Golden Gate Bridge when there was so much fog. As I was riding over the Golden Gate Bridge, I couldn't actually see the bridge. And I'm from Massachusetts, it's not like I get to San Francisco every day of the week. I'm from the clear across the country, so the one of the two times I get out to the city, I won't go over the bridge, I couldn't even see it because there was so much fog. Yeah. I hope you all have much better luck than me. Now we have a full day tour to Yosemite National Park by way of San Francisco, which will have you transported outside of the city and into doing a morning tour of the park. And then you're actually dropped off for three hours on your own to explore the park at your leisure and at your pace. So if you want to grab some lunch, you could do that. There's a big cafeteria there. You can enjoy lunch amongst nature. Uh, you could do a walk around the park. The floors um, are padded down, uh, the floors, the, the ground the f is padded down and it's almost like flat floors, I should say. Uh, you could do a short hike. I wouldn't advise too long of a hike, but uh, yeah, you're, you're gonna wanna just stay in the area, but you can walk around at your leisure. You'll head down to Los Angeles for a stay there, including a tour of uh, Hollywood. And then the Southwest Chief that'll travel to get out to the Grand Canyon area. And you will actually be staying at the South Rim of the Grand Canyon. So that folks is the Grand National Parks with Yellowstone, Yosemite, and the Grand Canyon all on one itinerary. As I should mention, at each of the destinations, mostly the cities, national parks, you have to take what national park lodges are available. But at the major US and Canadian cities, we offer options at three, four, and five star levels. So you do not have to just take what we have to offer. You can pick your own hotels to choose from and we will offer you a menu of options. Packing for the train. Packing for the train is easy. You're allowed two carry-ons of up to 50 pounds each and two check bags of up to 50 pounds each, and that's per person, and that's completely free. You can also check your luggage up to 45 day, hours, not days, 45 minutes, rather, ahead of time, 45 minutes. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. And that's actually what we say uh, for you to get to the station. We normally suggest getting there 45 minutes to an hour ahead of time. That way you don't have to wait. It's not like the airlines where you have to get to the airports an hour and a half, two hours, three hours if you're going international. With us, you can get there 45 minutes to an hour ahead of time. 
and still comfortably board the train. Now, luggage, now, we cover that. Accommodations, that's next. For, such as the coach accommodations, which are two big plush comfy seats that face forward. The seats themselves recline at a 45 degree angle with a leg rest that'll kick up, a tray table that will fold down, plenty of room above head for luggage, the important thing, outlets, charging devices, and a big picture window to enjoy the sights out of. That's the thing with Amtrak. We don't really care if you're a coach traveler or if you're traveling in the most expensive cabin. We, we want everyone, everyone to be able to see the country from the window of the train. After all, isn't that one of the key reasons you're going with us in the first place? The next step up is the sleeper roomette, which is its own private cabin on the train with the door that'll shut and lock, blinds that will go over the windows for privacy. At night, everything folds down to bunk style sleeping, as you can see by the diagram, and the big picture window to enjoy the sights out of. Now you're probably looking at this and saying, I don't see a bathroom in this cabin. That's true, the bathrooms are down the hall. There's three to four bathrooms, in every roomette car, and it's worth noting that only those that are actually booked into and staying in that roomette car have access to those bathrooms. But if you wanted your own private bathroom and shower in the room itself, the next step up is the sleeper bedroom, which is a larger cabin with a long couch, a big captain's chair as we like to refer to it, at night, everything still does fold down to bunk style sleeping. There is a big picture window to enjoy the sights out of, but it does have a bathroom and shower in the room itself. Dining on the train. Dining on the train is included whenever you have a sleeper compartment. It's already factored into the pricing. And we like to refer to the dining as our rolling restaurant. That's the kind of funny name for the dining car because it is a full menu of options cooked to order for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There is a head chef and a team of chefs, depending on how many people are on board the train, and the food is delicious. Now, I'm gonna dispel a rumor that is out in the marketplace that is completely a false narrative. A lot of people have been saying Amtrak is removing all the dining cars and all the meal services. That's not true. So if you have heard that somewhere or read an article somewhere or seen it somewhere on the internet, you're hearing it from the horse's mouth, it's not true. There is one key change and just one key change itself. So let me tell you, on all of the trains that are running from the Midwest, going west, all the long distance sightseer train, the dining on the train has remained the same. Nothing has changed at all. No dining cars have been removed. No menus have changed. Nothing has changed at all. On the shorter distance trains, the view liners, which is basically everything Midwest going east, the overnight trains have removed the dining cars. However, those dining cars were immediately, and by immediately, I mean same day, replaced with brand new state-of-the-art lounge cars that has access for just those in the roomettes and bedrooms. And the meal services actually have been updated with a brand new menu of options, such as chicken parmesan, braised short rib, uh, burritos and tacos, just to name a few, so kind of some up-to-date things. And the travelers have the option of either dining in the lounge car or receiving their meals in the uh, their own cabins. Simple as that. Does that make sense, folks? I hope I hope yes, because it's th there's been big rumors out there, and it's just a lot of fake stuff. And some yeses are coming through. And yes, that makes sense. Yeses coming through. Thank you. Now, everyday out discounts. Children age two to twelve receive fifty percent off the base ticket fare, so the base fare cost of the train ticket. Similarly, seniors 
and then any active military personnel spouses and dependents will also receive a 10% discount off the base ticket fare. Now, let me ask you, do we have any veterans on the presentation today? Any veterans of our armed services on the presentation? Okay, we got some yeses coming through. May I ask what branch of the military did you serve? Navy, Navy is coming through. Air Force, thank you. Army, thank you folks. I wanna thank you for your service. And um, yes, we see Navy, Air Force, Army, oh yes, Marines, we have the, the Corps represented on here today. So we have a lot of, um, uh, a lot of uh, representation from veterans. I wanna let you folks know that you will uh, now be able to receive a veterans discount. So before, if you were um, a veteran, but not active, Amtrak made it so you had to work through a program to get a discount. Just by being a veteran at this point, Amtrak and Amtrak Vacations have just said, forget about, you don't need a program, you don't need to be in a club, you don't need to be in an organization to prove you're a veteran. If you are a veteran, just tell us and we will give you a veteran's discount equivalent to the active military. Before I get the question asked, I am, I'm just gonna get ahead of it. Unfortunately, no, you cannot combine the senior and the veteran. You gotta choose one or the other. I've been getting that every time I do a presentation like this, and I love the humor of it just because you know you're, you're trying to get the little extra, and I, I, I appreciate that, uh, but you do have to choose between the veteran or the senior, if both applies to you. A reminder, we have a free, downloadable handout on the side of the GoToWebinar panel, highlighting our customization. And then, though I asked about your bucket list requests before, but let me ask you, as we've had more people sign on and whatnot, what rail vacation and or destination are you interested in? And when would you like to go? All right, as you answer that question for me, I'm gonna start answering some of your questions that you proposed to me for you. So bear with me a second. All right. So, very important question. We had someone asked, how is Amtrak providing a more clean and sterile environment um how easy is it to go from my home city to a destination back so number one amtrak and amtrak vacations values you as a customer you as a traveler we appreciate you booking with us and traveling with us i can tell you we've been getting regular emails from the top down about sterilization of the train stations they're doing it very regularly i would say almost hourly if not even more than hourly, just constantly keeping it up. So I can tell you, I don't think there's been a time where stations have been cleaner than now. And trust me, I've traveled to many stations and un unfortunately, and I'm gonna have to knock my home city a little bit. I love, my, I'm from Massachusetts, I'm from, I'm a Boston boy. You know, when you go in the, uh, the T as it's called, or the underground in Boston, not the cleanest places in the world. Uh, that's just Boston. I'll say it. I won't say it of anybody else's cities, but I'm from Massachusetts, so I can't say it. Whenever I've traveled through Amtrak stations, it has always been amazing to me how clean kept it, it, everything is. Even more so now with this environment, it's being kept up. Everything has been sterilized continuously. Trains to train station, the trains themselves. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, so this question might have even been proposed before I asked it or answered it, but we actually have over 500 different stations to choose from. And I've heard from multiple people recently how reassuring it is to them that they don't have to fly to their next vacation, or if they want to take the train, how reassuring it is that they can actually drive their own personal car to a station to pick up the trip and they can avoid the large groups of people uh, at the airports they can avoid going through you know you know going through tests and whatnot and tsa the fact that they can simply drive to pl a place to pick it up 
is reassuring. So I hope that answers that first question we have. Let's see, I'm gonna keep going. I'm so happy for all the people that responded by where they would like to go. Now, someone had mentioned uh, on terms of if they wanted to cancel and reschedule, but they didn't know when they wanted to reschedule yet. So they booked a trip, they're a little concerned about things going nowadays. I get it, I appreciate it more than most, but you don't know, you know you're gonna travel, but you don't exactly know when you wanna travel. Well, we can issue a future travel voucher that's good for X amount of period of time, and I can we can always check on the amount of period of time with our guest relations team, uh, but we can issue a voucher worth the value of the trip that's good for a period of time to rebook. So if you don't exactly know when you want to reschedule your trip, that I completely understand. I don't exactly know when I would like to reschedule um, <laughs> trips and whatnot. You can't always come up with that the moment of. So if you don't know, we can also issue a future travel voucher and you can then give us a call back when you're ready. Someone said uh, they've seen similar presentations to this. Are we gonna be doing different national park series? So we did one on Grand Canyon, one on the Mighty Five as, as it's known in Utah. This week's is Yellowstone. I believe next week we're doing a different one. Um, so we're doing we're we're moving them around. So sometimes similar packages will pop up uh, in different presentations uh, because one either they're very popular or two they're relevant. For example, uh, the Yellowstone Yosemite and the Grand Canyon has popped up on a couple of presentations, basically because depending on what destination you're going to, that particular itinerary has three of them on there. So if it if it one itinerary looks familiar from a past presentation. Just know one, it's particularly popular. Also two, it's probably relevant. Uh, someone's asking, is there porterage service for the luggage? So yes, within certain stations, if it's a manned station, which just essentially means that there are staff employees there, then they're usually known as red cap service employees. And yes, they can move luggage and even move people Sometimes the big stations have those drivable people movers like you see at an airport uh, at the station. Once you exit the station, however, between the station and the hotel, it's yours to move the luggage yourself. Now, when you're catching a cab, you're catching an Uber, you're catching a Lyft, most of the time the folks will you know, put the baggage into the, the trunk of the car themselves. And then when you get to the station, I mean, the hotels, most hotels have bellhops that are coming out there looking to help you out. So it's not like you're completely lost to the wind, but you know, you know, once you're outside of the station, it's not Amtrak's job anymore to move the luggage at that point, so you would have to do it. Uh, someone commented, excellent restaurant when talking about the View restaurant. Um, are the side trips via bus? Yes, they are. So the tours such as the Yellowstone Lower Loop Tour, or the tour out to uh, the uh, uh, Yosemite National Park. Those are done on motor coach buses. Now I can tell you they're different levels and different sizes. The vehicles in terms of the Yellowstone Buffalo bus tour, I did through Yellowstone's lower loop was very comfortable. They had binoculars, they had things clean to clean off the uh, eye lenses for the binoculars, it was great. Uh, someone's asking, where's your luggage while you are dining at the roof top restaurant in Salt Lake City. Uh, that point, you're probably keeping the luggage behind the desk at whatever hotel you're staying at. Hotels are always very fine with just keeping the luggage in their you know, rooms and closets and compartments off to the side so that they're you know, you know, keeping it secure for you. And then you could easily just double back to the hotel before going to the Amtrak station. Uh, someone asked, is there reserved seating on the train? Uh, not before you board the train. So basically you have to uh, choose your seat upon getting onto the train. We don't pre-select uh, seating, which there's a benefit there. It allows you to pick where you would like to sit upon boarding the train. Simple as that. 
So we had lots of representation from veterans. Uh, someone said, can you start the tour? I believe this is in regard to the Grand National Parks at the Grand Canyon in Arizona. Yes, all of our itineraries are customizable. Let's see, people want to go to Glacier, Seattle, the West Coast, Grand National Parks in 2021. Uh, someone asking, is there a payment plan option? Yes, so we can do uh, a deposit as long as the uh, itinerary is booked 60 plus days out. So what I mean is that at 60 days, we need the full final payment. But say you're booking 100 days out or a year out or beyond that, because we can book up to 24 months in advance, you can put a deposit and pay in and pay out how much you want as it gets closer. Again, is w once we hit 60 days, we need the final full payment. But if you are booking a year in advance, two years, 11 months, whatever it may be, whatever the, your situation is, we can put a s solid deposit. It locks in the price. It locks in your availability. And then you can just continue going and paying at your leisure. Someone's saying, do we offer any other parks? Yes, we do. In fact, Amtrak Vacations has packages to 15 national parks throughout the United States, as well as the Canadian Rockies in Canada, which the Jasper National Park and Banff, those are national parks as well. So someone's asking, how does one get from the train station to the park? Well, it really just depends on which park. For example, when we go to Yellowstone, you do have to get off the train in Salt Lake City, and then we send you on a scenic guided motor coach point to point from Salt Lake City to your hotel in Yellowstone. That itself is about a five hour drive. However, there are other tr uh, trains and other parks such as Glacier Park, where the train station drives literally up to the door of the eastern end of the park. And from the door of the Glacier Park station to the door of the Glacier Park Lodge is only 209 steps, it's up a walk path. Then you go, then there's the example of the Grand Canyon, where Amtrak goes as far as Flagstaff, Arizona, and then we tra we transport you over to Williams, Arizona, and from there it's basically adjacent to the Grand Canyon, and it's just about an hour and a half scenic train ride from Williams into the Grand Canyon Village. And the reason why it's an hour and a half is because mostly because it takes a time during scenery. So it really just depends on which park you're going to. Someone's at, uh, and we always get this, do we do um, airline tickets? We don't, we do not book the air. Uh, someone's asking for Glacier Park, are there car rentals for extended stays? Uh, we know we used to do car rentals here. I can tell you we, we have since stopped because the car rental places up in Glacier know they can book and have the space all, you know, and, and get all the cars rented. Uh, there are car rental places up there, dollar and, and budget that you can rent. We just wouldn't be able to do it. So as for folks, I know given the uh, topic of social distancing, People are wondering about staying six to 10 feet away from tra fellow travelers on the train. I'm gonna say this, this is eventually will pass and this social distancing thing will all go away. But as I've been very calm and uh, very understanding before, I understand and appreciate your question now. One thing I will say is if you book a cabin on the train, it's your own private cabin. You're not sharing with everyone else. It's you and your spouse, you and your family member, you and your friend, your travel companion, and you can simply lock the door and stay in there as long as you want. But there are areas on the train, the dining car and whatnot, where you will be in proximity to other people. Know that you know Amtrak is taking all the precaution to make everything clean and whatnot. But if you did want to travel on the train, you were nervous due to the social uh, distancing uh, precautions people are taking now, just know that you can also receive your meals in your cabin. So if you really did want to just stay in there, that's not a problem. And that's actually one of the benefits of traveling on the train. You don't have the benefit on an airline or, or on a motor coach bus like a Greyhound or a Peter Pan um, bus where you're just surrounded by other people. With Amtrak, you can actually go into your cabin, shut the door, 
go in and out as much as you or as little as you want. And there, your train car attendant will come to your cabin uh, before meal times, and you can request either to have the meal in the cabin or set up a reservation in the train car. So someone's asking if you have a roomette, uh, how can you how can you access to your luggage? Well, if it's checked, it's just in the checked luggage car. That's simple as that. It's just like the airlines. If you check a piece of luggage, you're not going to see it until you get to your final destination. The benefit of a roomette car, which I loved, is that there is an area on the lower level of the roomette car where there is open uh, luggage storage. So I actually didn't check a piece, I didn't check my luggage when I did a roomette last time because there was enough space for my large piece of check luggage to actually go into the luggage storage compartment on the lower level of the roomette. And so I could actually access it pretty much as much as I wanted. However, if you are in a roomette or bedroom and you check a piece of luggage until the final destination, we advise bringing a backpack or an overnight bag that you can either keep in your roomette or again, keep on the lower level of the roomette in the storage area. Folks, I know there is um, a lot of questions. I wish I could answer all of them. We had many, we, we had over a hundred and some odd people on the presentation. So I know I'm not gonna answer everybody's question. I will be doing one more presentation at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And if uh, you can't attend that or you need your question answered in the meantime, you can give us a call at 1-800-268-7252. And I want to say thank you to all of you for joining us today. So thank you, folks. Have a wonderful day.